It's not about the wife. Yeah, the horizontal tango with the bookkeeper was over. But he was looking for a new job. Yeah, flip a coin. I mean, the baby food moguls say he was happy in his work. But his wife says he has resumes in the mail and he didn't even want to keep their stuff around the house. Well, you don't like your job. Does it mean you throw away the product? Maybe there was something wrong with the baby food. Or the company. Maybe he didn't want the food around the house because it reminded him of trouble at the office. You think your job's not going to last. You're going to look to move on. Let's check their books. I'll get a subpoena and get the DA's auditors over there. It looks like they're in the classic startup squeeze. This baby food was walking off the shelves. Well, then the money was pouring in. That's not the way it works. You have to pay for supplies to make this stuff months before you get paid for selling it. So the more successful you are, the more strapped you are for cash. So you go to the bank, you show them your sales records, and you borrow money. You know, new ideas are hard to sell. Miss Madsen had a $2 million loan, but she had to pledge her personal assets as collateral and pay six points over prime. That's a sweet deal for the bank. Apparently not sweet enough. They called the loan six months ago. I worked very hard to get Ann Mazden that loan. The timing was in our favor. The bank was under pressure to help women entrepreneurs. But not under pressure to keep on helping them? I fought our loan committee on this one for months. Our accounts were technically out of balance. We had to call the loan. Out of balance? You mean there was money missing? No, nothing like that. It was just that her inventory plus receivables fell below some arbitrary figure. I tried to save it, but... Well, she must have spent part of that two million. How did she pay it back? Did she get a loan from some other bank? She got a new partner. They must have found the money somewhere. Did she say Steve Green was a new partner? We didn't ask. It sounds like they're operating with no visible means of financial support. A, a time like that, where do you go for two million? You don't go to the neighborhood loan shark. And why did her finance guy end up with a bullet in his heart? You know, I'm starting to think you're right. These people are all mobbed up. I think we should ask about the investors. After Harry was killed, we explored in our own minds any possible connection to our company. We looked at the books before we gave them to you. They were straight. Well, we heard Mr. Rankmeyer was looking for a new job. I can't believe that. He would have told me. Do you have any idea why he wouldn't want his baby eating Nature's Way product? He took a couple of cartons from the office. Maybe you can tell us. What does this have to do with his being shot? Mr. Rankmeyer was in finance. He must have done a good job. Because after your loan was called, you've been running this company on absolutely no money. Harry took care of that by bringing Steve into the company. Steve arranged refinancing. It was part of our partnership agreement. I pledged my own assets. I believe in this company. There's nothing about that in your books. It came from a private venture capital group. They like to operate quietly. OK, where can we find them? Why, detective, you have an idea for a new product? Where can we find them? I've got it. It's not exactly Wall Street. It ain't Little Italy, either. There is no one here, mister. You must make an appointment. Well, who would that appointment be with? You leave your name, Pajalusta, here. And they call you, OK? Lady, uh, that's not the way it works. I know nothing. Nichevo. Hey, I don't think these people are going to exactly give Citibank a lot of competition. Well, no wonder Steve Green didn't want to talk about it. Well, it was his partner who gave us the address. When Harry brought Steve in, it saved my life. I was staring at a backlog of orders I couldn't fill. The bank was going to take the house I inherited from my mother and lose everything. Steve got me all the capital I needed. Did you ever meet the people from Brookings who made this loan? I was busy promoting baby food. Steve handled the whole thing. All I did was sign papers. I take it you trust him completely. He's honest. He's hands-on. You know, hardworking son of immigrants. Steve Green? Immigrants from where? Scarsdale? His real name is Sasha Gruskov. He was born in Russia. What kind of interest did you pay on this loan? 25%. percent It's one point less than usury. Didn't that seem kind of high? Yes, but I had no choice. Makes sense Steve Green changed his name. Gruskov family, extortion, credit card fraud, prostitution. The mafia's taken lessons from them. Well, for Gruskov money, 25% was obviously a family favor. Hey, 
They put money on the street at 20% a week. And little Miss Organic doesn't know who she's dealing with? Maybe Harry Rankmeyer knew. He brought Steve Green to the company. Report on your print. For a partial, we had to go with the AFIS, and they only started to feed cards into their computer. How's it stand? One million in, 60 million to go? Well, lucky for you, they started with the two-time losers. Lucky for us, our print belonged to one. Nikolai Rustoff, Brighton Beach. Assault and more assault. Brighton Beach, Gruskoff family. Think you knew Steve Green? Yeah, let's pay him a visit with a warrant. Look, I don't like this. You should really wait for him. Well, don't worry about it, huh? Nick must have a good job. He drives a Camaro. Oh, yeah? You seen him around lately? Sure, I saw him this morning. He likes silk suits to go with his Camaro. Oh, good for him. You know what? Judging by his taste in ammunition, he also likes 32s. I got a peacoat. Navy issue. You, stick around. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. Do you understand that? Hey, Nikki, is this the flavor of the week? <laughs> 